Hello and welcome back to Radio Gore Press. This is episode 108 of Ooh. Three Big Idiots <laughs> Talking About Horror Films. And um Do you call him big? <laughs> that's the bit you take issue with, not I'm, the idiot part. I mean I'm, <laughs> I'm well aware that I'm an idiot at this point. <laughs> We're all big, big idiots. Um I'm Sarah, joining me as always. Are my lovely co-hosts Phil and Rosie. Hello. Buongiorno. Oh. Ah. Saucy. It's because I'm drinking an Italian rose. Is that a side effect of drinking Italian rose? It makes you I wish speak it was. Italian? If I could speak fluent Italian just by getting drunk on Italian booze. You would Imagine if that was a thing. You'd have aced Duolingo a long time ago. Right? <laughs> Thank you. But imagine if that was a thing. You could go on holiday and if you didn't understand what people were saying, you just had to get pissed on the local booze. To some degree that works. Because the <laughs> are, more... you sure, are you sure it doesn't just make you speak English louder? <laughs> no, the more drunk you get and the more those around you get drunk, um, the more we sort of resort to uh, the universal language of like uh, hand gestures and <laughs> hand gestures and saying <laughs> saying wine or beer yeah and pointing at wine or beer mm-hmm. I, I would say arguably everybody one, becomes easier to understand <laughs> because we are reduced to our baser wants and needs when we're drunk wine and beer yeah absolutely and <laughs> chips how are you guys doing anyway I'm fine. I'm, oh dear. So <laughs> Phil's fine. Rosie is. Phil's <laughs> doing a funny. Phil's saying that he's fine because during the mini sode, I had a go at him for just saying he was fine. Um, no, you had a go at me for saying I was tired. <laughs> oh, are you yeah. tired? And then, uh, actually, I slept pretty well last night. Oh, well. For the so first he is time fine. In a while. <laughs> <laughs> My only two states, tired or fine. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I've if always said, tired, then I've always said the two, that my dad the two only has. <laughs> the two I've genders, always said that my dad fine. only has two states of being, and that is bored or cross. <laughs> like, there's no. He's never like ecstatic or upset. He's just bored or he's cross. That's the, the those or asleep. I think that's yeah. I think that's most men over sixty, isn't it? Yeah, dad that's my mode. understanding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pure dad mode. Um. So yeah, you're you're a dad. So. Tired um, or not over sixty? Not, tired. <laughs> not yet. As long as you're not cross, <laughs> that's what you tell people. <laughs> secret found the uh, secretly found the uh, fountain of youth, and I've just been drinking from it for. No, nah, you've got a picture of you getting older in the attic. Yeah, there's a, there's a painting of you in the attic that looks like <laughs> shit. Imagine, imagine you being curious enough to go and find the fountain of youth, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> much yeah. rather get a photo of myself done a painting of myself yeah. done <laughs> inquisitive isn't one of his snaps. states <laughs> you went to snappy snaps and got a six by four of yourself for doing finger guns oh and you God, stuck I, it up in the attic that's like a, a segment from <laughs> are you afraid of the dark or something like that like it's just a photo booth at a supermarket that's cursed to keep people's age locked into the photo how is that a curse <laughs> that sounds Fair. pretty great <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure Dorian Gray enjoyed it at the end of it all. Eh, he was a whiner. <laughs> <laughs> Dorian Gray, whiner baby. Um, I'm, I'm all right. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, good lord. Okay. No, um, uh, I like I was saying to you just before we started recording. Mercury is no longer in retrograde. Fuck you, Mercury. I'm in a really good mood. <laughs> Well, it's been, awesome. I cannot, I've never been so affected by Mercury going backwards <laughs> as I have been this year. This is, I'm going to be honest, this is like a foreign language to me. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's, I've it, heard it, the words Mercury and retrograde before, but that's the extent of my knowledge. Basically, uh, at least three times a year, Mercury does a little backwards dance and it three fucks times. everyone's shit up. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Um, <laughs> but every year it's only in one element. So this year it's in air signs and air signs are all to do with like your mental capacity and intellectual levels. So it's been fucking everyone's brains up for the past month and a half. Do you know what? That explains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm like, now a believer. 
and like it's normally during like mercury retrogrades that people break up or have arguments with friends or like stuff happens with work or like it's just it just fucks everyone's shit up well that sounds deeply unpleasant <laughs> yeah but um it, it reached its like apex and it's now out of retrograde so we've got two weeks of stuff being a little bit fucky but not as much and then, <laughs> and then we're all good until september oh cool yeah good to know so so i'm feeling positive <laughs> because of the planets <laughs> <laughs> and who are we to argue with the planets they're a lot bigger than we are exactly i wouldn't want to try Fair it point they so, would almost definitely win in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we're all a little bit reticent to uh, <laughs> <laughs> to delve into this week's film. I'm going to hold my hands up and apologise. <laughs> <laughs> and so you should. Uh, quite rightly, yes. Um, this this is not a coaxed apology. This is very freely <laughs> forthcoming. Um, I'm so, so sorry. This was my suggestion. And... The reason I suggested it is because I saw it pop up on Shudder a little while ago. And it's one of those films that's been on my radar for a long time. Obviously. Why? Well, basically, because of its notoriety, because I was like, I got super down the video nasty rabbit hole at one point when I was a lot younger and like, you know, just trying to consume the most shocking things that you possibly can. Like when you're 17 and your friends are finding like faces of death videos and you think it's like cool. It's not cool. If it's, any 17 year olds are listening, <laughs> it's not cool. It's not watching videos <laughs> on like e fucked of people getting their heads chopped off and stuff. It's not it's not okay. It's not okay. Um but because of that passing interest, um I, I was I'd been aware of this film for a while. And when I saw it on Shudder, I was like, fuck it. Do you know what? It's a film I probably should have seen. As a, <laughs> as a, as a lifelong horror fan, it's a film I should have seen. Right. Uh, so I put it on. I got 17 minutes in and I just went, nah, no, eject. <laughs> um, and I bailed on it. And it sort of, this is probably a terrible phrase to use, but it kind of got under my skin a little bit. And I was like, what if... <laughs> we did what a show I, on it. I subjected we, Sarah, uh, Phil and Rosie to this as well. This. <laughs> I mean, so what if I inflicted this upon my best friends? <laughs> it's a cliche, but a problem shared is a problem halved. <laughs> How dare you share this problem with me? Uh, I did, uh, and we all watched it, and now we're going to talk about it. In your defence, uh, <laughs> the. <laughs> Cannibal Holocaust episode has been doing surprisingly well because people like that's to the type boo of, <laughs> yeah, fucked up shit. That's the type of audience we have. So I was really, really happy when I went, I don't want to do that episode. And you guys went, okay. <laughs> Whereas with this one, I was like, I don't want to do this episode. And you were like, tough shit, neither do we. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you bailed on the last one. You you were, got off lightly with the Cannibal Holocaust one. I did, I did. So um, it was time. I would have cried for a very long time. Uh, yeah, I... We'll get into this, we'll yeah. get into this, but, <laughs> but, but basically, basically people, fine, animals, not fine. Agreed, agreed. And Cannibal Holocaust definitely has more of the animal stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's worse. There's just a lot more of it. <sighs> yeah... I'm good with never watching it. I have honest. I have thoughts about the whole kind of animal cruelty, human cruelty, uh, mental kind of separation. So we will get to that later. Okay. Um, but before we do, does anybody have a synopsis or like a brief breakdown? I mean, it's a very, it's very... Probably worth announcing what film we're doing first. I, d I said Necromantic at the start, didn't I? Did I not? I think so. I don't think um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're doing Necromantic. <laughs> oh, maybe I said it was a hundred, episode 108. <laughs> A hundred and eight. You definitely said that. <laughs> One. Notice how I didn't pick you up on that. <laughs> well, yeah, because we can't cover the same ground every fucking week <laughs> we can and frequently do 
you've just got the wrong attitude. <laughs> okay. Well, I love that Phil says as well, like, uh, all our listeners want is stuff like Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> Don't insult them I, straight off the bat. I'm Did just you hear saying- him? That Phil- <laughs> was what has got us a significant amount of views. Yeah, that's Phil saying, y'all nasty. <laughs> I d- right, okay, so, um, whilst you're looking up the synopsis, Phil, because I assume that's what you're doing, I that's am why not I'm entirely... filibustering. <laughs> filibustering. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Um, I, I'm not convinced that it's got so many views on YouTube because people like Hannibal Holocaust. I think we got a shout out for that particular video. From who? Because... I, well, I don't know, but the, I mean, this is really not to, something we need to be talking about during the episode, <laughs> but, but the number of views that we've got in comparison to all of our other videos oh, is yeah, no, so far removed that it doesn't make sense that people just really like Cannibal Holocaust. Oh, it does if you look up other kind of Cannibal Holocaust videos. I tell, what the fuck is wrong with me? There's a real fascination <laughs> with controversial stuff. I'm not even kidding. I, I hate it. <laughs> I feel like this is a general feeling that's going to reemerge quite a lot during this what, episode. What, the phrase, thanks, thanks I hate I it. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> Go on, Phil. Let's uh, let's have this very intricate plot detail, please. <laughs> Fill us <laughs> in. <laughs> nice. Uh, fortunately, it's a nice and short synopsis, which is apt because there's very little going on with this film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a street sweeper who cleans up after grisly accidents brings home a full corpse for him and his wife to enjoy sexually, but is dismayed to, dismayed to see that his wife prefers the corpse over him. The end. That's the synopsis. I mean, I'm going to start off from a very um, contrarian point of view. N- not like me, I know. <laughs> Crazy. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here. And probably you guys may disagree with me. I think that one sentence of a synopsis actually sounds like the setup for quite a funny, potentially interesting mm. film. Like a bit of a, a bit of a romp. <laughs> like a really. I mean, I also this don't is agree arguably. With it. Yeah, well, no, this is <laughs> arguably a dark comedy. But I think like if they'd sort of i'm not suggesting go full weekend at bernie's with it but like <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds <laughs> it sounds far more comedic than the film that we ended up with yeah 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 i completely agree with that i also don't i don't think she preferred the corpse to him i think she just didn't like i don't that allow me to restart <laughs> i don't think the corpse had anything to do with her spoilers leaving him because she just took the corpse with her and went to go and find someone else. Like it, it was just a side thing. It wasn't a. <laughs> I don't agree with that synopsis. That synopsis is bullshit. <laughs> find another one. It's not. No, no, no. Don't find another one. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not being literal. <laughs> it's not often that we disagree on the synopsis. <laughs> I feel like this is setting us up for the tone of the show. Um, uh. So I'm aware of the director's other output, shall we say. Um, I've heard a lot about a film called, I think it's Dare Todas King, which I can't remember what the translation for that is. I believe it's gross. Um. <laughs> and I've heard the film is gross. So oh, I guess surprise. he has like a shtick that he does. Which director? Um, Jörg Butgerait. Butgerait. Edgar Wright. No. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Edgar Wright. Sullied forever. Um, I, I believe he only made a handful of films. Good. And I, th- <laughs> and I think Necromantic was his first. And he's kind of gone on record as saying that he only intended the film as an exercise uh, of rebellion, basically. To- was it like a fuck you to the... Uh, film to, to the ratings board, the censorship yeah. people. Um, in in the same way that a Serbian film was like two middle fingers to the government, uh, run kind of ratings and film board. I bet. I bet well, you. There's said, something I else you, I'm never gonna watch. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you said that after the ratings came out, though. <laughs> no, it was just a joke, guys. It's, you say uh, that it's deliberately provocative. <laughs> You say that, this was actually reasonably well critically received. Actually, I did read that. (laughs) Now you mention it. Bafflingly. Was it because of all the piss? Uh, 
My third, my third note is just why so much piss. There was a lot of piss, wasn't there? Why? Why so much piss? I, I would say any piss is probably too many, but this was like a, a too, lot. Too many. Too many. Yeah, too, too many pisses. How did the woman in the beginning pee so accurately standing up? Did she? It looked like she's yeah. pissing on her own underwear at one point. Was she? I don't, it didn't look accurate to me. It looked like she, it looked like she was weeing forwards. <laughs> I mean, maybe she had a she <laughs> Uh This was in 1987. I don't know when the she was invented. Maybe <laughs> she was a maybe I'm she was a fucking Google pioneer, it. Rosie. <laughs> pioneer maybe she the was she-wee. the inventor of the she Maybe she was the we all along, <laughs> <laughs> and the we were the friends we made along the way. <laughs> I mean, it was hard to tell. The direction of the piss because it looked like this was filmed on a microwave so <laughs> props to you for even being able to make that out to be honest i think i've got a clip for the uh for the video file already <laughs> oh no <laughs> is it the we was the friends we made <laughs> oh, it's just this whole, the whole exchange direction um, of the piss <laughs> the one thing that this film really does have going in its favor um, interesting <laughs> yeah i'm <laughs> Intrigued. Uh, this is coming from somebody who loves a bit of dungeon synth. Is mm. uh, the soundtrack? It's it's just weird German dungeon synth all the way through, and I'm kind of here for it. <laughs> but did you notice that the music when it says music by, it's mm-hmm. like uh, Jelensky and like Buckerite and John Boy Walter. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to be credited and just went, oh, no, Clearly. fucking John Boy Walton. John Boy. <laughs> that, that, that was my favourite bit of the entire film, and it was right at the beginning, which says a lot, I think. Not credited Anne of Green Gables. <laughs> I just, yeah, I was, I was a big fan of the music, I've got to say. Uh, apart from the sexy music. Which was which very was... weirdly romanticised. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It reminded me of, um, you're going to hate this. It reminded oh, no. me of Don't Look Now. <laughs> oh, f- get fucked. Don't sully that film for Amazing. me. But I was like, gonna, the, I was the, the, the romantic room. music <laughs> over what I felt was an incredibly awkward love scene. Um, just that's what it smacked of to me. I don't know you think it's adorable and like it's it's the coming together of two people, whatever. This is the coming together <laughs> of two people and a corpse. So fine. And, and a bit of pipe. <laughs> oh, what was that? I've, I've almost <laughs> forgotten about that. <laughs> well, I had questions. As soon as he took the corpse home and it became obvious that they were going to have sex with it, I immediately had questions, which were answered quite quickly, it turns like, out. Dildos were definitely about in the 80s. If they had shiwis, they definitely had dildos. <laughs> but a fucking pipe. <laughs> what was it pi- like I, I was but struggling to tell yeah, they had to saw through yeah. yeah it was Betty in the bedroom with the lead pipe oh no oh, you are horrible <laughs> <laughs> worst game of Cluedo ever I also kind of like that she was called Betty because whenever he came home with a dead thing he was like Betty <laughs> <laughs> like some mothers do have them and it just it killed me every single oh, time betty betty <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of the film i genuinely thought was quite funny okay I did. Wait, with the I couple just... the yeah, couple that had just... the accident you mean no 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 no, no. <laughs> i was gonna say no, that was that's that was quite you know graphic um i just <laughs> Sorry, I needed to drink just, some wine to sorry, start this we'll, sentence. We'll just wait here while you knock back some peanut grigio. <laughs> That's fine. I needed to. Um, I uh, certain problems that I had. So after this like horrible crash, mm-hmm. um, obviously the street cleaners <laughs> the get sent to like. Mean. <laughs> yeah, after that the it ends and everyone was a lot crash. happier. <laughs> Um, the street cleaners turn up and they get rid of like the body and a half or whatever. And um, this that guy, was pretty well done. Can I just I say thought the the effects were actually like pretty great. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't say consistently great throughout, but there were no. standouts, and that was yeah. one of them. I expect yeah, what they did sure. the opening bit was they buried the actress up to like her waist and had a false kind of shirt that laid across the ground because mm. they they cut it just before. Or they cut the, her in half. Or they or cut they her, her in half. half. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> or, and I put it to you. <laughs> Wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> nice dedication to the role. <laughs> the true method actor. Yeah, well, cut me in half. <laughs> well, it turns out that a farmer was going to cut her and eat her later on anyway. Oh, so no. Just oh, it. Time. Um, We're going to get to that. <laughs> but he comes home still wearing his, like, onesie. <laughs> his, his death onesie sure that's what that's um, the technical term i believe <laughs> i didn't think you were allowed to just go home covered in biohazard yeah you're not <laughs> and then and then he gets like but then he gets like loads of bits of person out and starts putting them in jars and all i could think was this is exactly how i see people in my head who collect wet specimens <laughs> do you know what oh, th- right this is where we differ <laughs> <laughs> like seeing them in a museum brilliant love it or like uh, a medical um museum i guess like brilliant people who collect wet specimens definitely are the sort of people who work for street cleaning companies come home in a hazmat suit and drop an eyeball into a jar well i'm not gonna say the thing i was gonna say now <laughs> what <laughs> i've always wanted a wet specimen <laughs> I just I've, hate- looked, I've looked for Why? them online because Why? I think they're really cool. For the same reason that I have a bunch of taxidermy and bones, I think taxidermy they're cool. is less weird. Like, just go and look at it in a museum. You can see loads I more have. of it, and it's well kept and it's really interesting. Why do you want the spirit collection uh, at the National want- History Museum? Is outstanding, by the way. They have a giant squid. It's quite <laughs> remarkable. Oh, what <laughs> chef kiss? Why would you want like a tiny goopy dead thing in your room? Well, it depends a goopy what it was. Dead thing. Depends what it was. But this is why I don't have one, because they're notoriously difficult to get. They're very expensive. You can buy sort of like dried things to make your own wet specimen, but then you've got to source your own <laughs> Oh, cool. Jar so now they like just and, like... desiccate <laughs> dead things and send them freeze dried as if it was like space ice cream. Or sea yes. monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I sea-, find sea monkeys less weird. They're alive. See, not not the ones I had. I was going to say my sea monkeys <laughs> basically did I become mean, a wet specimen. Technically, you had a wet specimen. Then. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a really excellent insult as well. You fucking wet specimen. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking yogurt. <laughs> I just I can't get over the fact that that's exactly how I view wet specimen collectors. Like in my head, right? I nailed it. I mean. But I would love a wet specimen in my house to gawk at and marvel over. I would never bring home pocketfuls of people <laughs> I, I just don't, found on I, the street. I do not believe you. <laughs> well, I've got no way of proving it, but we have spent <laughs> long extended periods of time together during this which is, I did not come home with handfuls of This is people. why I don't believe you, because... <laughs> If there's one thing that I know you do and you know you do, it's get hyper fixated and obsessed with new and interesting hobbies. Right. So if you got a wet specimen, you would or go, I need, I need more. And it, you would end up just like coming home with bits of things and putting them in jars. You would buy a five litre gallon of formaldehyde. Don't try and tell me you wouldn't. I wouldn't. Because I've had the opportunity to, and I have not. <laughs> not yet, anyway. No, I for years, I've toyed with this and I've gone, no, it's a step too far. It sounds like a lot of work. Basically, if they made it easier, I probably would have quite an extensive <laughs> wet specimen collection. If they had like a subscription, a monthly subscription for wet specimens. Wet specimen club, sign me up. You'd be all over that. Yeah. <laughs> And what? you'd like bring me into your spare room and be like, look at all the weird shit I have in jars. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I can live without it. Well, that's again where we differ. <laughs> <laughs> but all I can <laughs> He turns around to Betty and he's like, do you like it? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, I'm making pickles. He's just making, he's making pickled bits of people. He's pickling people. That's what it is. Yeah. It's like cottage core, but at its worst. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, cottage core is kind of the worst. <laughs> I t- oh. mm. ah. It's too twee. It's too twee. <laughs> and I'm the sort of person who enjoys a village fate. This is I too s- twee. <laughs> I sold a key rack today that I listed as goth slash cottage core. 
<laughs> that's fairly fucking niche. I'm gonna right? say that. It's a but cool it key rack. Fucking yeah. worked. Yes. <laughs> so um, right. So when he comes home with the handfuls of person, people, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um she's having a bath. <laughs> Um, I don't think Losh in- endorsed whatever was in the bath. No. No, what, I agree with you. What what was going on? What doing? I, that was a <laughs> lot of people. That was a lot of red. Mm. She definitely had red on her. She <laughs> did. Because <laughs> it was directed by Jörg Edgar oh, Wright. Oh my God. Phil, oh, <laughs> <God, laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> The joke was right there, come on. <laughs> the joke was Edgar right there. What is this, fucking amateur hour? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> hey, we earn money from this. Hopefully, <laughs> this, isn't, hopefully this isn't going to last for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Just you um, wait. The the bathing in blood thing, obviously very bathery. Like, I can, mm-hmm. you know, I can get on board with that. The thing that I found cooler was her wearing sunglasses in the bath. <laughs> I have never thought about wearing sunglasses in the bath, but you'd better be fucking right when you think I'm going to do it from now on. And you think I'm weird for wanting wet specimens <laughs> in, in my house, but you're going to so, bathe in sunglasses so now. How, no, wait. How <laughs> is that weirder? My thing is less pretentious, put it that way. <laughs> no problem with being pretentious <laughs> clearly actually, actually is it is it is um, having wet specimens in your house less pretentious than wearing sunglasses in the bath yeah. i want to set up a poll online asking this <laughs> um without context that's going to be a really weird <laughs> would you rather i can take my sunglasses <laughs> off you still have jars of odd shit in your house I can yeet them out my front door. <laughs> that won't be true anymore. <laughs> I'm just imagine your neighbours peering out the window to you yeeting little lamb embryos out of your front door in jars. <laughs> well, just you wait. Hate wait, specimens. Yeah. I haven't had a mental breakdown in a while this time. <laughs> Must be due. There's always time. Wait till September. Next yeah. retrograde. There you go. I'll pencil it in my diary. <laughs> um, yeah, everything about that scene is pretentious as shit, though. Because Well, yeah. What? the Bob, Bob, Rob, Robert. Robert. R- Roberto. <laughs> Bobbit. Robathon. Uh, Robothy. He's, I can't remember what his name is. It begins with Rob. Rob. Bobatron 3000. <laughs> yeah, that one. Um, he's watching TV on a double bed surrounded by chicken wire, <laughs> listening to a guy who's presumably a psychiatrist talking about how you can cure phobias by exposing yourself to them. Yeah, he's basically talking about like flooding therapy, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, immersion therapy, yeah. And he uh, name drops Krumholtz and Thorinson, who sort of pioneered stuff like that, as far as I know. Like, I can't remember offhand if that was them who did it first. Um, but it's 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 all terribly fucking pretentious, isn't it? Like oh, a guy hugely. lying in chicken wire bed listening to psychiatry whilst his girlfriend, his very sexy girlfriend, bathes in blood. And Charles like, Manson oh. looks over them. Oh, the minute uh. I saw the Charles Manson picture, I was just like, the one mm. thing they had on the wall has got to be the edge lordiest thing. They were just like, <laughs> right? no, it's not controversial enough. We they need a serial killer. Well, it, I mean, the only thing that they were missing was playing like neo-Nazi black metal in the background. Well, also Jeffrey Dahmer would have made far more sense within the context of this film. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, maybe a bit of Edmund Kemper as well. Yeah, yeah. He did yeah. dash of Ed Gein. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Not Charles Manson though. He would he would have been the last on the list. He he never fucked anyone's neck stump. So no, <laughs> I'm not uh, entirely sure why he was in it. Or made a human dildo with a pipe. Also true. Yeah, that's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Um, <laughs> I get the feeling there's going to be a lot of that going on in this episode. So many firsts here at Radio Gore Press. Um, so coming back to the scene that you were just talking about, though, I literally wrote down. Well, I started to write, make a note about the um, the thing that he was watching, um, and I wrote, I wrote down the word "systematic desensitization" until I realised it was so goddamn heavy-handed. 
Oh, yeah. Because I was literally. just like, oh, well, he's clearly trying to make a, a a statement about, you know, the desensitization of violence and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, this is too much. This You took it too far. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like... It- I feel like everything in this film is so fucking on the nose. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, uh, that's maybe one of the biggest problems I have with it. It's not, in, it's not fucking intelligent at all. Do you think like, it was trying no... to be? Yeah, oh, fuck yeah. Come on, look at that scene. <sighs> I don't think they did that to, like, take the piss. No, I don't. I think that because probably was a statement. Start... But nothing about this film screams highbrow to me. Or To art. start with the quote what lives that does not live from the death of someone else like everything about it is so like black leather trench coat seen the matrix one too many times wearing your sunglasses in the bath <laughs> wearing your sunglasses in the bath <laughs> yeah. um L- like going going into pubs and asking for jack and coke but like hardly any coke because i just prefer the way it tastes yeah and reblogging like, stuff about the columbine killers on tumblr yeah and like oh you know killing kids is wrong but i really appreciate that they had a point like oh, oh <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> hate it hate it hate everything about it i do not think this film has an intelligent to coin a phrase bone in its body um I I don't know if I'd go that far. Huh. I mean, the... I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here in defense of it. Sorry, go on, Phil. No, just just to drive the point home. There was the entire scene where they were in the cinema watching this kind of like uh, ostensibly gruesome slasher movie that they yeah. created. Um, it was the definitely audience, the audience <laughs> were just watching it absentmindedly. Yeah, mucking around, kissing laughing. each other, like laughing, it was joking. A... It was a porn slasher, um, because in the ending credits, um, somebody's credited as the porno killer. Oh, okay. Mm. So it was a porn slasher. And it's at the point where he starts, like, getting all touchy-feely with the girl who's running away, like, throughout the entire film. Yeah. (laughs) It just seems like a really fucking boring film. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, it's at that point where they all start, like, kissing and getting a bit touchy-feely with each other, which, again... It was just... It was Benny Hill, but stabbier. Right? (laughs) I felt like she went back back and forward into the same room over and over again. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly what happened. But, yeah, I think Um, think you're right. That that scene and the scene that we were talking about when um, Bob, Robert... Bubba was on the bed. Bubba. Bubba on the bed. Bubba on the bed. (laughs) That would have been a better title. Um, Bubba on the bed. Yeah. (laughs) You wouldn't have known what it was about immediately. I mean, speaking of everything being on the nose, that extends to the title as well. Mm -hmm. Well, May as well have called it Fuck's a Dead Guy. (laughs) Um, But yeah, there's no way, despite the director's protestations, that this was just a big fuck you to the censors. There's no way this wasn't also supposed to be an exercise in like attempting to hold a mirror up to horror audiences and being Uh, like, this is the shit that you like. This is what you want more of. You know, why do you like this? Especially you fucks. (laughs) But I think that, am I wrong? That has to have been the intent as well. But again, I I agree with you. I think it is very much a, oh, we're breaking the fourth wall and we're putting a mirror up, man. Look at yourselves. Look at how sick you are. Mm. Like, fucking great. Brilliant. What Has that stopped me watching horror films? Absolutely (laughs) not. Has it stopped me wanting to watch your horror film? (laughs) Fucking yes. And I think it's such a, it's such a kind of well, like largely spoken about topic that actually... It's nothing special. Like at least Cannibal Holocaust was quite a niche message about kind of um, the ethics of reporting. Mm. Like that felt very relevant. Whereas this, this is, is just like it's such a broad. Well, kind this of is it. It's, it's, concept. it's like trying to make a nuanced point with a fucking sledgehammer. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point where I'm like, this isn't intelligent, and it's not intelligent not because they don't make what is potentially a good point it's mm-hmm. the fact that the way that it's executed is so on the nose and heavy handed it just makes me go oh f- fuck off yeah i don't mm-hmm. i don't need this yeah. i don't need that in my life agreed agreed it feels like uh, <laughs> somebody who's far smarter and far more aware than i am is telling me how to think <laughs> what, yeah. get the bin and i think that sort of point only works if you're not very self-aware to begin with Mm. yeah 
Um, yeah. Because, yeah, you're right. I did find myself watching this film, you know, gleaning that point and going, but I'm not enjoying this. <laughs> yeah. No, I, don't, I don't like anything about this. Yeah. I'm not the sick one. This is terrible. <laughs> But the, but this is it. It's 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 that thing where somebody goes, "Oh, you just like this because you're sick." Yeah, I've made this thing because you're really sick, and it's like, well, actually, I don't like it. So the person who's made it, which is you, <laughs> are the sick one, presumably. Mm. I I wouldn't even call. Uh, I don't know. I it's, don't. It, it's not sick. It's just a bit dumb. Yeah, mm. I don't mm. necessarily like labeling films as like sick or necessarily sitting in judgment of why a person made a film or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ironic since that's literally most of what we do on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Sit in judgment of I, filmmakers, but um, <laughs> I don't like it. I don't enjoy doing it. I don't though. care for yeah. it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I just think fine. Make the film that you want to make but don't then almost insult your core audience. Yeah. Like they're the ones that have paid for this and you're sort of, it's kind of a fuck you to anyone who does enjoy it. But isn't that the edge lordiest thing of all? <sighs> I guess so. I hate that. <laughs> right? Like there are so many levels of stained loving bullshit to this film. Considering we have covered climax since... This is the edge lordiest film we've done since <laughs> Strangeland. Right, so I Gaspar might, in Noe. Fact, I might like I was tempted to watch Climax as a fucking palate cleanser after watching Necromancy. Bit of eye bleach. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> um Gaspar Noe is incredibly pretentious, mm -hmm. but he knows exactly what he is and what he's doing. He owns it at least. Yeah. yeah. He is more than happy to stand up wearing the most flamboyant fucking feather boa suit in the world and go, I'm pretentious as shit, motherfuckers, and you love it. Yeah. Um, whereas this film is like some kid sitting in his mum's basement going, oh, you're a bunch of fucking dicks. Oh, you don't like this film. Oh, you like it because you're a sick person. Like, <laughs> they just, oh, I, I hate it. I would, I, just like, hate it. I would like to hear from the director. I did try to look for That's interviews. That's what it would sound like. Well, That's exactly I, what it would sound like. <laughs> I did try. Well, the director apparently was uh, the boss at Joe's Street Cleaning Agency. The one who looks like Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. Apparently that oh, is yeah. Jörg Butgreit. Not Why Butgreit, that, don't say it. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? Well, <sighs> because it's a bit it's of a Soska <laughs> sisters move, isn't it? It's like... Oh, the, the guy Hitchcock the... put himself in his film, so I'm going to do the same thing. No, don't. You're not an actor. Go away. The, the guy with the fucking weird aviators and comb over made this piece of shit. The one, yeah, the one literally wearing the serial killer glasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think... The Jeffrey Dahmer of the piece. <laughs> I think the point of the film would be far more uh, interesting had the whole video nasty movement not been dedicated exactly to that concept. Like the reason video nasty lists exists is because there was a moral panic that mm. people were going to be desensitized to violence. Like it, that had been going on for years beforehand. Right. And then mm -hmm. this director was like, yeah. you know what? I'm going to make a film about violent films, desensitizing people to violence. It's like, that's not a new concept. That's been <laughs> That's exactly the reason video nasties are a thing. Exactly. It's like a fucking GCSE film piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like somebody's gone, oh, here's this really edgy thing that I learned about when I was reading a book about video nasties. I'm going to make a film based on that, <laughs> but like 15 years too late. Mm. So what I will say is yes. that... Um... Sorry, I'm being really mean about this film. <laughs> no, I am kind of in defense of it a little bit. Um, it's kind of credited with, because the German censorship board was so strict at the time, arguably yeah. more so than it was here... Mm. Um, this film did push the envelope to a degree that it opened the door for a lot of other kind of exploitation cinema and sort of credited for films like um, like Carl the Butcher, Black Past, Violent Shit. Um, I mean, perhaps wouldn't have been good, released. Absolutely, stuff like this needs to happen in order for um, film to move forward mm -hmm. from being so chastised um yeah i uh, ultimately i do not believe in censorship as long as what we're seeing isn't um isn't like real film. yeah it's literally like a snuff film 
Um, as long as it's all simulated violence, I don't believe in censorship. I believe in arming the viewer with the adequate warnings of what the content contains and then letting them decide because they're a fucking adult and you yeah. shouldn't get to decide what anybody else consumes yeah. based on some weird archaic view that watching violent things will make somebody violent because that has been disproven mm. time and time again. And yet it's still used as a a fucking argument time and time again. Mm. I think it would um, be perhaps more um, uh, relevant, I suppose, if had, had that film made any real impact, like apparently it was released and the German cl- kind of classification board just went, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Did they? They, they didn't really. Make a, <laughs> they didn't really make a fuss about it. Which is like they kind ironic, of ignored it, and considering then, it was banned here. Yeah. yeah. But then, then there was a, a kind of a bit of furore over a Necromantic Two, and that's when the first one kind of got dragged into right. the spotlight as well. Oh well, that was the early nineties, though, wasn't it? That was nineteen ninety one. Yes. Yeah. It and was, there was yeah. a big. Yeah. Okay. So that, I mean, that kind of makes more sense. Um, what I mean, you were saying about um the films violent films not begetting violent people mm-hmm. um for them <laughs> yeah um it doesn't cause somebody to be directly violent but there is statistical analysis and there is proven like peer reviewed information to show that uh violent video games for example um can cause somebody to become ostracized rather than violent. And the ostracism is what leads to intrusive and dangerous thoughts, which can then lead on to violence. Are we talking about children or adults? Both. Or both. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, not to like because this is this is what um this is what Jay's uh, PhD was based on. And it's it's really interesting to look into because it violent video games and violent films do not cause people to be violent, but they can cause people to feel isolated. And Why, that in itself. W- what element does the violence play there then? I haven't I haven't looked enough into it. I genuinely couldn't tell you. I just know that there's a direct correlation between the two. Which is that's interesting to me because surely, like I can understand sort of any kind of obsessive then you interest have... would lead somebody to potentially be isolated and ostracized, but I don't understand why violent content would do I that guess, over I guess other. much more I guess it's effective much more in video games than it is in films, because in video games you are fighting against everybody else. Well yeah, yeah, and it's kind of so first the idea person, of ostracism within that. Yeah. Absolutely. Like you're you're often in a lot of games not even seeing your character, it is you. Yeah, I know, I know that. Though. I know that. I know that his work was was first and foremost to do with ostracism within video game settings. Okay. And I can't can't um, think of anything particular, any situation in which there have been people who have, for example, forgotten to eat or forgotten to go to the toilet because they're watching films. Like it's specifically mm. a video game thing, and I think that perhaps might tie into the idea of just the immersion and the actual like. I hate to disagree with you, but talk to any neurodivergent person who has okay. procrastinated pissing. Okay, <laughs> because they've been doing something more interesting. Mm. Maybe then it's more it's more of a kind of um, uh, evident phenomenon with video games specifically. Then video games yeah. are much more immersive than yeah. films. So absolutely, like you can watch a film and then the film. Will, I, I think that's because of the time length. Though I think a film ends after like an hour and a half, and you mm. go, "Okay, cool, I can go and do other stuff now." A video game is never ending, potentially. Mm-hmm. Like you can spend eight hours of a day playing a video game and they go, oh shit, I haven't showered, I haven't eaten, I haven't slept, I haven't gone for a wee, I haven't mm. done any of the stuff I was meant to do today because I was so immersed within this thing. I think I think there is like a definite conversation to be had around violence, begetting violence. I think it's way more nuanced than the idea that like you watch a violent film and it makes you a violent person. Yeah. But yeah, I don't absolutely. think I don't think it's fair to like say it's a hundred percent one way or the other. You know, I, I it's think it's gonna the, the, it's gonna depend on a thousand and one oh, individual absolutely. factors. Yeah. Absolutely, case. that's why I say it's way more nuanced yeah. than just like. All I know is I can only speak from my personal experience, and I have consumed so much controversial, violent 
awful stuff over the years. And it's never made you want to go out and... I've never even had a fight. I'm a massive fanny. (laughs) Oh, baby, yeah, you are. You are. To paraphrase um, Johnny Rotten, couldn't fight my way out of a crisp packet. (laughs) (laughs) I've always heard it as couldn't fight your way out of a wet paper bag. I think crisp packet was what he said. Like... (laughs) In re- that's why Sid Vicious yeah. got the nickname that he did because he was such a, <laughs> a puppy dog. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, not not to like be all fucking lame and quote Wes Craven, but but you gonna movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. Yeah, I think yeah, that's absolutely. I think you need to have a predisposition for being a fucking head case uh, yeah. in terms of going out and killing people. Um, absolutely i think i think in well i would bet my house on upwards of 90 percent of these cases being that this person was perhaps you know having these violent impulses anyway yeah predisposed to a certain way of thinking yeah definitely no i would completely agree with that i I think it's a fascinating subject actually it is it is um and i think probably we should explore this at another time mm, so yeah for sure <laughs> Would Look at us getting to... serious conversation out of I necromantic. Know. I didn't expect <laughs> this. But I, yeah, I would love to come back to that. Um, now, obviously, none of us were looking forward to covering this. And I'm going to get into why a little bit. And those of you that have seen the film, I'm guessing most of you listening, um, will know that A, this film features animal cruelty and death. And that B, we do not like animal cruelty and death. I mean, bearing in mind 66.6% of us are vegan. <laughs> yes. Um, interestingly, the people that I've spoken to about this film, um, whether vegan or not, were similarly affected by this the quite explicit scene of animal torture. Yeah, absolutely. Like, in, in very much the same way that if you show somebody who is uh omnivorous uh video of male chicks being ground up because they are not needed um just like mindless slaughter don't make is me how i would put it but but <laughs> if you show but if you show somebody who's omnivorous that they will be similarly affected and they will be horrified by that it's not going to stop them like eating meat though it's is it? the cognitive dissonance isn't it it's yeah the, absolutely it's the absolutely. separation that's, from that, that's what it is. meat as food and meat as part of an animal yeah and it's uh it's kind of shown in this film as well because with the rabbit um i mean that's so, the main one isn't it that's the well that's the only real anyone. one Animal that's death. the only real one and it's worth noting that you did look it up and actually the rabbit being killed was going to be killed it was destined for a cooking pot it was a farmer's yeah. rabbit they were going to slaughter it i don't i have way less of a problem with that than an animal being killed for a film yes yeah. absolutely i think um, that was I mean, obviously you weren't present for the cannibal holocaust show but that was something we sort of touched on a little bit um when we discussed that because a lot of the um animal cruelty and death Sorry, my cat's making a meal of sitting on the <laughs> beanbag. <laughs> if you can hear any scratching, it's not them in the tray this time. <laughs> Miracles do happen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, similarly, kind of the the animal cruelty and the death that happened in Cannibal Holocaust is stuff that generally would have happened anyway. Uh, more the- life cycle than something happening for film. Yeah, not in every case, um, but yes, largely. Um, yeah. And actually, not to keep kind of creating parallels between the two, but I, I think it's interesting to note that both films sort of have a similar effect when it comes to kind of intercutting the yeah. the animal death with the human death, because obviously uh, that scene is quite, it's quite extended. You yeah. see this farmer murdering and then skinning this rabbit and it's horrible to watch. Oh, um, just... But yeah. it's intercut with um, whatever his name is, Bob. Bob. Um, is he kind of autopsying uh, a cadaver? I think he's doing so. Yeah. He's doing yes, something because, with a human cadaver. Well, because he's trying to immerse himself to not be scared of dead people anymore. Yeah. Because um, he starts off the film phobic, doesn't he? 
Uh, yeah, somewhat. Um, because so, they're saying in the um, the other guys who are working for that street cleaning company mm. is like, oh, Rob, he doesn't want anything to do with like cleaning up the bodies. He couldn't do it. He said he couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. He's scared. Yeah. Um, what a leap, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. Talk maybe we should. Emotion. Maybe we Ooh. should be scared of human bodies, eh? Um, well, if that happens, then yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I just I thought it was interesting the way they were intercut um, because it sort of becomes a bit of a struggle to differentiate between yeah. the two very barbaric or seemingly barbaric acts, and it's like, well why are we okay with one because it's an animal and not this because it's a dead human? Like, why is that? Cause I mean, generally people would be more affected by, I think, I think that um, people are less affected by seeing a human being cut apart on film because they know that, it's that is not real. They know that that is not real. I think if there was no uh, law surrounding what you can and can't show on film involving like a cadaver, I think it might be more affecting for people. What- you say that there are films that have used actual human cadavers in like autopsy scenes and stuff recently. Mm, so yeah, the, the laws fair. are not what but, you would but, think. But then, but then. Um... Did you do you remember the guy who did the Sigmund something? He did the Body Worlds exhibition and oh, he did like yeah. a live autopsy on television. Yeah, my like dad wanted sheer, to go see that. The sheer level of complaints that that show received, um, because it was a real body rather than a fake cadaver. I find it really interesting that in this day and age, people can still consider this film to be so controversial because, mm. and I'm not saying it shouldn't be because it's fucking gross. Like this is the most. This is the wettest, most disgusting film. <laughs> wettest. Um, yeah. It is the wettest, like, since Body Melt. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it, is, it is gross, and it is, yeah. like, willfully offensive. Mm. But I did read an article in preparation for this show, and it sort of made the point that... I don't know if you guys have it in the US or other countries, but we have a show called Embarrassing Bodies. Oh, yeah. But the sort of shit that is on primetime television... Mm is far worse than anything you would see in a previously banned video nasty. Yeah. And it kind of boggles the mind that like what's the become two would acceptable. Be seen so, we but the, the two would be seen so differently. Ah, why, but why one is, is for science. But uh, is it? No, it's not. It's the modern day freak show. Yeah, like it's yeah, it, it's absolutely. all it's all contextual, right? Like the reason it's called embarrassing bodies is because there's a a tacit acknowledgement that it's there for entertainment and And, uh, yeah and there's a stigma to the things that they're discussing presumably i don't know i I don't know why anyone would go on to that show no no particularly in a company with socialized medicine (laughs) and like the national health service it's not as if (laughs) it's not as if we need to because i because i know like if they if they paid for the treatment then fine but well this is it like oh i'm really embarrassed by this thing that's going on with my body so i'm gonna go on national television (laughs) and talk about it but there's no other way (laughs) It's just it's, it's utterly bizarre. Um, but uh, do you know what the thing that I f- hated most about that scene? Obviously, like I was not okay with Bunny meeting its untimely demise. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing that I was most not okay about it is they bonk it over the head and then slit its throat, and it's still alive. Mm-hmm. That fucking wrecked me. I, I would... could I could not watch that. But I would go I, as far as to say that was worse than some of the stuff in Cannibal Holocaust because um, at least in the more Because I see that today, as like abject cruelty. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I think particularly in the more up-to-date director's cut of Cannibal Holocaust that we watched where some of the animal cruelty was caught, yeah. um, it was predominantly very swift deaths. Yeah. Like they would piss around like fuck around with the animals post death which was gross mm. um but you didn't get the impression that the animals necessarily suffered too much whereas this was just this is it that yeah. this was very very difficult to watch and i think i think yeah. the the length of the shot as well doesn't help like i think i remember if i remember correctly cannibal holocaust is fairly swift with its cutting yeah and so you get kind of a respite from it whereas this is just like oh this was take. just like elongated it was intercut for about three or four minutes. It was mm. grueling. 
I uh, I wrote a note, uh, which was stop cutting back to it. Yeah. I was, well, that like, was, stop, it. I was just stop fucking cutting <laughs> back to it. I don't like, I know what's happened. I don't need yeah. to see any more of it. Well, this is it. When I was kind of trying to do what I thought was a nice thing and like sending you time codes for parts that you might want to kind of look away at. And but, I was just like, oh like, no, he, there's another one. <laughs> but, oh, no, but this is it. it. Like you can't, <laughs> you can't realistically skip through all of those bits because not only do you miss all of the other bits, which make it make sense, but it's about a 10th of the film. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's literally like seven, eight minutes of a rabbit being fucking bludgeoned and then degloved. Ugh. And that and that's what it is. It's not like, oh, a rabbit being made for dinner. Like, no, this rabbit was fucking bonked on the noggin. It was they, oh. could, they couldn't have found like a What's hit me over the edge was when he was removing the eyes. I was just like, no, fuck. Oh yeah, no, I I'd forgotten that because I did mm. fast forward through that bit. I was like, no, fuck you. <laughs> fuck I'm you, done. I'm not doing this. That was I, horrible. I am willing to admit that I spent a good uh 45 minutes after the film ended being quite angry with you with me <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> yeah um i'm over it now but... <laughs> thank god <laughs> but i was proper like fuck you sarah how dare you make me watch this <laughs> i don't want to do this i don't want to have to field questions from people asking why we aren't friends anymore because <laughs> <laughs> she made me watch a rabbit <laughs> i was i was just super like oh no fuck you <laughs> fuck you so hard can I? <laughs> right. So, I did think this film was disgusting, and I obviously I've just said that I don't find it to be as controversial as its reputation would suggest, and I yeah. don't. Especially sort of getting to the end and going, "Oh, well, that wasn't nearly as bad as I was expecting. That was just silly." Mm. Um, however, I think one of the things that made it reasonably disturbing, mm. especially when it comes to things like the rabbit, is that it looks. I'm guessing because of budgetary constraints, it looks like some sicko's home video. Looks like a snuff film, doesn't it? Yeah. And I think that's what lends it this air of like, it just, it it felt disturbing because it felt like I shouldn't have been watching it. It didn't look cinematic in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I think- And like all of the uh, written parts are clearly like handwritten in Tipex over a bit of acetate. Mm. And- <laughs> yeah. I quite like that. <laughs> Like aesthetically, it was very cool, but yeah. it wasn't like in keeping with something that you'd see at a cinema. Mm-hmm. It felt like the kind of film that you might see at a cinema uh, that Bobbit went to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you might go, "Oh, uh, is the film started? Yeah, ten minutes ago. Mm, a ticket and a beer, and then just sit there and be like, this is just the worst." <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. But yeah, it definitely had the air of something that felt like we shouldn't be viewing it mm. yeah and i think yeah, that's what skeeved me out more than that's, anything that's similar how it's similar to how i felt with cannibal holocaust like it's that mm. it's that just the aesthetic and the intercutting between because it's so rare unless you actively go out and look for it or it happens to be something that you sort of are, uh come up with in your day-to-day life it's so rare to see actual animals being killed yeah um and so when you're faced with that it's 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 a weird kind of mental hurdle you need to get over Mm -hmm. um and yeah it it just makes it just kind of drags everything else down with it i suppose yeah i would say like my my idea of it sort of feeling like something we shouldn't be watching extends to the whole thing though not just the oh yeah yeah Yeah, for sure but it's it's just everything all together right yeah yeah the the, uh the sum of its parts absolutely um can we just talk about the sound design very briefly? Obviously, again, budget was an issue. Yeah. I loved I think, it. Did you? <laughs> did, I'm not I talking about the, the score. I'm not oh, talking about okay. the score. I'm talking about the very disgusting, uncomfortable... Oh, well, this is some of the most disgusting Foley work I have ever heard <laughs> in my life. Imagine, right, though, being a Foley artist and somebody going, right, in this scene, a woman is going to fuck a pipe with a condom on it that's attached to a cadaver. But by How the... would you even do that? I have no idea. By the end of it, though, you'd be like, another piss scene? Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> I'm a pro at that now. Pro at piss scenes. That can go on your CV. 
piss foley <laughs> i told you this was gonna be an episode in which we said a whole bunch of things for the first time <laughs> piss brosnan <laughs> <laughs> oh you would call yourself piss brosnan wouldn't you yeah <laughs> i am the piss brosnan of foley work <laughs> absolutely <laughs> <laughs> and it would be true <laughs> so true <laughs> but yeah i think that i think you're right i think the score is surprisingly good mm. for a film of this quality i was definitely shocked but the sound design is almost inexcusably bad budget aside it yeah. was disgusting. Maybe that yeah, was intentional was to add to how gross it was. It was just very, like you said, it's very wet. Mm. It was very squelchy. <laughs> and I hate the word, and so does everyone else, but it was very moist. <laughs> oh, very moist. Oh, like a bit of lemon drizzle cake. <laughs> so are we going to talk about no. the scene? <laughs> we, ha- we have to talk about the sex scene. <laughs> Which one? The main one. Oh. Kind of basically smack bang in the middle of the film. Oh. We have to. Oh. We're here. I know. Purge it from your system, Rosie, and then we never have to think about it or talk about it ever again. It's just not all right. <laughs> I'll be honest. I was surprised at how little you see. It's basically done very, it's very romanticised. It's, it's, it's very kind tasteful. Of, <laughs> it's that it's I don't know if I'd go that far. It's, it's very like tastefully a, done. <laughs> it's like a 70s porn film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the weird sort of tracking and like the and like dreamy the, like, Yeah, like the soft focus and the kind like, of ghosting no, effect. No, um, yeah. they're not fucking a dead man. They're making love to him. <laughs> yeah, basically that was the suggestion. I mean at least she put a condom on it, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Well, she would have got tetanus up her chuff. <laughs> <laughs> Again, another thing I never thought I'd say or hear. <laughs> I think I was more disturbed by her solo sex scene with the corpse. Like the, the, the corpse kind of lingers. But like literally, Reanimator walked so mm-hmm. that Necromantic could run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> that guy is not doing any running, let me tell you that. <laughs> Apart from his eye socket. <laughs> oh god, the eye. Just... That was the worst part when she was like making out with the face and the eye just went bloop. <laughs> was that no, that was him, wasn't it? Both, I think both have. So in the Where in he the, was in... just like yeah. and then just his eye popped back out onto the skull. <laughs> Speaking of it being a comedy, I <laughs> was it the Apple guy? No, not the Apple oh, guy. Good lord! It was, was the guy weird. who got beheaded at the end. That cut back to him, <laughs> the, guy the, the guy in the graveyard, and like doing like beaker hands. You know, like beaker in the Muppets when his hands are just like this. Slayed me. I I I, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I rewound that to watch it again. Did you? <laughs> Just like going the half head and just like weirdly placed hands. It's like so the, the most I... fucked up version of Talladega Nights. <laughs> Rosie and I couldn't wait for this to be over, and there's you rewinding this. <laughs> just that one thing. I had to make up for the for the bits you guys skipped over. <laughs> there was a really funny moment. Uh, was there? Like, yeah, there was. There was one really funny moment in the. Actually, the, the bit at the end's pretty fucking funny. There was one really funny moment in the middle of the film. Um, apple guy who is picking apples and then yeah. accidentally gets shot because apparently that's I love the misdirection thing. of leaving the kind of hook like focusing on the hook on the ground like oh what's, yeah. what's gonna happen no you get shot yeah <laughs> um it's just the fact that after this guy dies um uh, spend after spending an entire scene of just looking like he really fucking hates apples like he's picking <laughs> them and he's like oh, i hate this oh this is the worst thing ever um he's shot gets dead um and then the guy who shoots him's like ooh, ooh. and then it cuts to a shot of a gnome going yeah. like i know what you did <laughs> one of my and notes just this, read gnome <laughs> with this cheeky little gnome face <laughs> that was looking at him being weird, like you though. shot that guy i saw it with the weird eyes. like slapstick elements coupled with the tone the re- the tone of the rest of the film right was so bizarre 
Like literally <laughs> half of it could have had the Benny Hill theme tune over it and made <laughs> sense. <laughs> right? If we do a reel for Instagram, can we have the Benny Hill music? <laughs> of course. Thank you. As you wish. This is not, do not compare this film to The Princess Bride. How I, very I day. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> that would be the worst mashup. I'm going to make my very last comparison to Cannibal Holocaust here. And I don't know if it was like an era thing or particularly, I don't know, maybe this was inspired by in parts. What but year the soundtrack? Was Cannibal Holocaust. Ho- ho- Ooh, woo. <laughs> Can it will hobble cost? Um I hate that. I might I hate that I did that. I I don't love it. <laughs> I'll be honest. Not my favourite thing you've ever done. But in terms of the soundtrack being kind of misleadingly serene, mm. it really it, I thought it was quite reminiscent of that. Uh, like almost as if it's supposed to A, provide some sort of weird dichotomy between what's actually happening on screen and B, to kind of like lull you into this false sense of security and like, oh, this lovely, like calm. Oh, no, they're fucking a dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know but, what I mean? But the, but they're fucking him with affection. They were making love to a corpse. <laughs> I hate that I said that. <laughs> Can you edit that out? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I hate myself no, take right now. Backsies. Not only will I not edit it out, I might just intercut it extra times throughout the episode. <laughs> just punctuate it, yeah. start and end the show with that sentence. They were making love to the corpse. <laughs> but do you, do you know what I mean in terms of the soundtrack? Like it was quite twee and sentimental in places and it was really at odds with everything mm. that was happening. That's why it really reminds me of like Dungeon Synth. Because Dungeon Synth yeah. is quite, it's weirdly twee. It's weirdly like <laughs> cutesy for something which is so aligned with black metal. <laughs> it was quite like, just the music generally was quite, um, uh, there was there was no real consistency to it. There weren't these kind of, like you say, these serene kind of twinkly piano bits where uh, sex scenes were happening. But there was... <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you really didn't want you to get that sentence out. You didn't want to say <laughs> when they were making love to a corpse. <laughs> You are right. I did not want to say that. <laughs> but also there was there were scenes that were just kind of like scored with uh, just like this grating uh, kind of weird robotic oh, like whale song of, or something like that. Yeah, there was robotic, one in it. Like, like an like, orchestra tuning up kind of kind thing. Of, yeah, yeah. Just this, uh, but like somebody uh, sort uh, of make it trying to mimic like a sound that only dogs can hear as well. <laughs> <laughs> like they're really discordant. Mm. Yeah, I know exactly what you and mean. It's no, very strange. Hmm? Krista Burr. <laughs> That's something sure. only dogs can hear, right? <laughs> Lady in red. I just heard that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, mate, you said it. I have poked holes in that theory immediately. <laughs> and there was, there was also the, there was a, a scene that was just kind of scored with like a violin playing six notes repeated over and over and over. And that like really six discordant notes, like discordant yeah. notes over and over and over and over again. And it, it kind of gave it that kind of, I think it harks back to this idea of it being a bit pretentious. It gave it this kind of art housey vibe. Yeah. Where it's, it's just kind of meant to be really just gross and not pleasant to experience. Yeah. It's meant yeah. to be like sensory overload, isn't it? Yeah. It just, but in a really easy, easy cheap listening way. way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that music. <laughs> ba, 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 That's basically ba, what ba, it was. Ba, ba, it was ba. it was goth music. <laughs> <laughs> goth elevator music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would a goth elevator involve? Uh, uh, the soundtrack to Necromantic. There'd definitely be a goat in it. <laughs> and it only goes down. <laughs> I love it. So sure. I I want to know what you guys think of this one thing that I read. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so in doing preparation for this, I came across a theory that this is a very feminist film. <laughs> I can't even get that out with a straight All face. Right. All right. 
Can you explain this theory a little more before I rip it to shreds? <laughs> well, the argument being that Betty is the only empowered character in the film and knows what she wants and takes charge and yada, yada, yada. Feel free to pick it apart now. <laughs> oh. Please do. I mean, I, I think if there was any feminist message in there, it was entirely incidental. <laughs> Agreed. I, yeah. I have no doubt that that was not the director's intention. I don't... Yeah, I can't imagine him setting out to make a feminist masterpiece. If, <laughs> I think if, that's a fucking reach. If Betty was a feminist mm -hmm. and a strong, empowered woman... She would be getting her own corpses. She would have not... Exactly. There's no way that she would have been with that fucking guy for as long <laughs> as she was. Well, also, she wouldn't have had sex with the corpse because a corpse can't enthusiastically consent. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Absolutely. Completely agree. No, no that's ass bollocks, <laughs> isn't it? I thought it was a really bizarre theory, but it's I thought a, it's it was worth mentioning. A reach. <laughs> I think so, yeah. She is the not the only woman in the film. No. I think she's... Mm, God, There yeah. was the, the victim in the film. <sighs> Who's well, there was away. the sex worker well, sex at the end workers as well. The sex workers. Um, that was horrendous. That was very indicative of the time it was made. Um, yeah. The late 80s, early 90s were rife for films with prostitutes getting their comeuppance for being prostitutes. Yeah. I'm not saying it's correct. I definitely don't agree with it, but it's something which has been shown within films time and time again. Yeah. Um, and it's, on, it's only like now that we're getting to the point where, again, we call them sex workers rather than prostitutes or hookers. Well, not or... everyone, sadly. <laughs> yeah. Well, but yeah. yes. Um, but yeah, the, that portrayal of them is quite cold and callous. And yeah. And as you say, it's only now when we're like, oh, they're just people. Well, yeah, duh. they're they're people who are making money, <laughs> yeah, uh, in the best way that they can, and why the fuck not? Mm. Well, precisely. But yeah, very very negative derogatory portrayal and a bit victim blamey. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, oh, she got what she deserved because she laughed at him. Yeah. Well, that's probably good advice yeah. not to laugh at a man when he's inside like, you. There, but... there was a. It was a very. Uh, <laughs> it's not, of a it's not gonna feel good, is it? <laughs> I, I mean, it's it's not going to make you any friends, put it that way. <laughs> but yeah, it, sorry, Phil. No, as you can say, it was um, a very, for want of a better word, passionate killing. It wasn't done... It was done out of anger, out of emotion. Yeah. And it was specifically against a woman. Um, and a professional sex worker. Mm. That was just... I don't know. It was just... I would also... Okay. It right. was so fucking cliche. Even, I feel like even at that time... Right? It would have uh, been a bit cli cliche? No, I, yeah, I think a lot of this is yeah. really fucking cliche, to be honest. But, uh, Which is so strange. Like, but also, like, um, the cat, for example. Yeah. Which we know is a fake, and that's fine. Although mm -hmm. I would say we knew that the baby in a Serbian film was a fake, and it's still very, very affecting. I did not enjoy yeah. watching this scene at all. Um, but... This is going to sound really dumb. Oh, no. Um... <laughs> We don't normally have to preface all of the other dumb things that we say. <laughs> Just go for it. <laughs> his his killings mm -hmm. are female. Yes. His killings are female. Mm -hmm. um, cats are seen as girls. Dogs are seen as boys. Yeah. Had they had a dog that he'd brought in, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been so much of a killing of passion because he was yearning for his ex. But it yeah. was a it was a cat and it, it was a loving creature and it was like an almost motherly creature to him and then he killed it. Mm -hmm. Um and again, I think it's a really on the nose thing, like oh, there's no such, you know, there's no such fury as a woman scorned, but wait till a man gets scorned and then he'll go and kill all the women. Yes, I see what you're saying. I sort of approach it from a different way in that I think it sort of highlights how pathetic he was 
Oh, like, like, yeah, for sure. Like he'd that, been emasculated yeah. and lashed out in the most pathetic, predictable, childish way. Well, I'm not saying it's childish to murder sex workers, but you know what I mean. Like it's I very do know what you mean. Impulsive like impulsive and rather you can't than control his emotions. Yeah, mm. it's a tantrum. Go to fucking therapy, my guy. It's a tantrum. It's it's not a thought out killing at all. It's not a mm. planned killing. Um, the fact that he then realizes that, like, once he's killed the hooker, suddenly Betty's got a proper hard on. Ugh. Right, let's talk about the end. Come on, we're getting there. <laughs> let's do oh, it. Oh, Jesus. What? The old stab and spurt? <laughs> if that's what we're going to call it, yes. Um, I had a fairly good idea where this was going. I'd read an article beforehand and it sort of, it said it, the film culminated in the only way you would expect this film to. So I kind of had a good idea where it was going. And a few places I had seen describe this as like the most shocking part of the film and like, oh, you won't believe it. It's the most controversial. This was the daftest. I literally wrote, what a twist. (laughs) <laughs> at, literally at this it was at that point that i was like oh well this was silly wasn't it right <laughs> like oh guy finally overcomes his fear of dead people and decides to become a dead person and it turns him on so much that he ejaculates whilst he's stabbing himself fucking yeah. great <laughs> like i really feel like i didn't waste 71 minutes <laughs> of my life watching this bullshit I mean, this film was 71 minutes long and I would argue that it was 75 minutes too long. Oh, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I I honestly hated just about everything about this film. I think it's really interesting. It's, it's so rare that we cover a film that none of us has seen before, mm-hmm. especially one that is so notorious. Yeah. So this has been a really interesting experience. But yeah, I, I I'm definitely... I'm not going to say I'm glad I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no. I kind of am glad that I watched it because I can say that I have and I will never return to it. <laughs> it's really frustrating because Arrow have a phenomenal release with beautiful artwork. Why? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Why? Nah. <laughs> no, no, no. So basically, I think motion to start... Um, a how did this get made adjacent podcast <laughs> called why did this get made <laughs> that's my overriding thought i'm behind um, that i'm down for that <laughs> and i guess i now feel is... like we wouldn't necessarily come to any answers apart from just going but why it'd just be an hour and a half of head scratching i don't <laughs> i don't know but why i beats me the why? fuck is wrong with them <laughs> but why I feel like this is as good a place as any to start maybe wrapping up. I Mm -hmm. would agree with that. The sooner we end this podcast, (laughs) the sooner I never have to talk about this film again. Go on then. What did you guys sum up your thoughts for me? And what would you give it out of 10 if you had to? Um, I hated every single second of it. Um, I never want the name of it to darken my doorstep ever again. I, I, the soundtrack was the only redeeming feature, put it that way. Um, and that was purely because I like a bit of dungeon synth. Um, <laughs> can I even score it out of ten? It was just to your pre- head. You have to. It was just pretentious nonsery. It was awful. You can um, give it a minus if you want. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a one and a half out of ten for the music. <laughs> I think that's fair. Um, I but I genuinely like. I don't think I've ever viscerally hated a film as much as I hated this one. Uh, yeah. What about you, Phil? <laughs> what struck me, and it's not something I expected, and who knows? Maybe was, the... was that I was very turned on. <laughs> <laughs> no, fortunately, not. Ten out of ten. <laughs> uh, and maybe I'm kind of like uh, justifying the film's message, but I found this film immensely boring like, I, I, I like, am gonna completely agree with you there that's a, identical to a thought that i had considering the the subject matter and everything that i knew about the film beforehand i feel like the worst thing an exploitation picture can be is yeah, boring <laughs> yeah that like that, that was because what was... are they exploiting <laughs> well it just there were there were moments that definitely dragged 
And in mm. a film that's only 71 minutes, wow. Yeah, I was I was bored within half an hour, like half an hour, three yeah. quarters an hour. I just wanted it to be over. It was mm. just, there was just so many moments that just went on far too long. Like the apple picking scene. Mm-hmm. I He's picked apples, fine. I understand. <laughs> I don't need to see this again. <laughs> Like there, it just there were so many scenes that were just far too long. I quite enjoyed mm-hmm. that scene. It gave a bit of brevity. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a breather. <laughs> and like the gnome being like, "Ah, you cheeky little <laughs> the burglar, gnome. you That's cheeky it. little rapscallion." <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that that was just knowing what I like you say, knowing what I knew about this film and having the comparison to Cannibal Holocaust. I was expecting something a lot more uncomfortable to watch, but. I just felt like it was just they they'd gone to they'd gone into town they'd raided the local Halloween store they'd raided the butchers and went uh, we've got everything we need let's make a film mm. like it was just it was just boring and none of it very little of it had was enjoyable or I liked I, in any way yeah I think in general we all prefer films that are a little bit more cerebral like. maybe <laughs> well like we, we like really dumb films that know they're dumb <laughs> and play into it but mm-hmm. like we also like pretty cerebral films so having a film which is like dumb but trying to be really clever mm. it's just kind of annoying mm. yeah i i don't know i wouldn't even say it's trying to be really clever i think it was a bit of a confused mess yeah and that's what bogged me the most it wasn't nearly i mean Perhaps it would have been in 1987, but it wasn't nearly mm. as shocking. It wasn't bad enough to have earned its reputation, I don't think. Perhaps my gauge is a little bit off because I have consumed so much fucked up shit over the years. Um, but this didn't... I didn't find it particularly shocking. It was just unpleasant. Yeah. It's yeah. just really, horrible. It's really hard to know, isn't it? Because, you know, with the... Seeing what other films are out these days, you know, it's very easy to look at this film and, and think how fake everything looks, but mm. it's hard to know how, unless you were there. Yeah, and it's at hard the to end know of the how day, people reacted to specific films because, <laughs> because on, on the surface, like it is grotesque, like mm. having sex with the corpse, like horrendous. But it's, it's not even just that that's grotesque, it's like the whole film just looks unclean. Like, oh, even, for the, sure. even the external shots of buildings, everything is just mm. gross and dour and just nasty to, to look at to me it felt like alan partridge going is this shocking is this it is <laughs> yeah. this shocking <laughs> yeah what about basically this? <laughs> what about a woman fucking a dead body is this shocking <laughs> that's what the film screamed to me it was it was very partridge <laughs> that is not something i predicted <laughs> <laughs> have you seen necromantic it's very alan partridge <laughs> <laughs> that's how we're going to explain it to everyone it's alan partridge breaking the fourth wall <laughs> i i completely appreciate everything you both said yeah i think i think the soundtrack was probably the highlight um and i said well when i say soundtrack I, i'm not talking about the piss folly obviously this is a separate <laughs> you entity loved it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I agree. It was dull and it was unpleasant and it's not an experience I care to repeat anytime soon. I am in no hurry to watch the sequel. I, prob- I, I will never revisit this. No. And I think in terms no. of kind of the more... It's going right in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I think, obviously, Cannibal Holocaust and Climax are not this film's closest comparisons, but in terms of what we've covered on the podcast... Mm. Cannibal Holocaust, I will defend because it was, it wasn't boring. It was never boring. Mm. It was genuinely shocking in places. You could see why it had that effect on people when it first came out. And it was interesting in just the the sheer fact of the way it utilised fan footage at that time. And Climax, you're right, Gaspar Noé is a complete fucking butthead but do you know what? He makes visually beautiful films. In comparison, I fucking love <laughs> Climax. But at least they are cinematic mm. and interesting to look at, even yeah. if they are unpleasant. 
Um, and they tell a story. And they tell a story, even and, and, if and you fact, don't climax, enjoy the story. Uh, well, in fact, Climax told about 20 stories. <laughs> yeah. Which and no, uh, no very, died. very well. Well, this is it. Whereas this child. film, it, uh, what, what was the fucking story it told? Like, guy was scared of corpses, uh, is going out with a girl who likes to fuck corpses ends up breaking up with her and then realizes he likes fucking corpses too and then he commits suicide brilliant yeah. inspired <laughs> and runs through a field oh god i'd forgotten about that like oh, he with, frolics he frolics in the way that i anticipate somebody with a traumatic head injury to frolic <laughs> There's nothing quite cut, um... as amusing as somebody frolicking in German as well. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! I want to cut the Sound of Music soundtrack to that now. It might improve it. <laughs> Better than the piss foley. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think that's probably as good a time as any to wrap up our thoughts on Necromantic. Please, um, yes. Which will henceforth be known as that film we do not name <laughs> because I never wish to speak of this again. The Macbeth um, of the horror world. <laughs> <laughs> Out damn spot. Um, <laughs> I fucking love Macbeth. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. If you have made it this far, we absolutely bloody love you. Uh, um, we appreciate you so much. <laughs> nearly an hour and a half in, you are the real MVPs. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is longer than the film. <laughs> and hopefully not as boring. <laughs> I love how and no, like and nobody all... died. Nobody fucked a dead thing. This and is the start of this we're like, can we make this the shortest episode we, we've ever done, please? And we... an hour and a half later. Uh, oh, are no. we allowed a half hour episode? Is that okay? <laughs> I had a lot of thoughts I needed to get out of my system, and yeah. I'm very glad I did. That's what we're here for. Done. <laughs> Salt over the shoulder. We will never speak of this again. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening. You can find us in all of the um, the regular places on social media. I will link everything in the blurb. And you Woolworths. S- and excuse me? I said and Woolworths. <laughs> what year is this? 1987. <laughs> we'll be loitering near the pick and mix. <laughs> oh, do you know what? I fucking love Woolworths pick and mix. You could like really ram it in and then put the lid on. A woman who worked at Woolworths sent me back once to put more in because it wasn't full enough, the cup. Woolworths was a fucking no, the national cup treasure. Was... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fucking loved it. Amazing. Everyone who worked there, legends. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry. Much, much like everyone listening. Um, <laughs> the, well best thing, <laughs> the best thing you can do if you enjoyed the show is to like, share, recommend us to a friend. <gasps> yeah write a positive review if you feel so inclined we would be forever grateful or, or write a s- negative review that's really interesting so people want to listen to find out why <laughs> oh yeah all right we'll accept that <laughs> a one star but an intriguing Ooh, one star uh, mysterious <laughs> <laughs> one star i hate it but you'll have to listen to find out why <laughs> Or if you fancy chucking us some money to cover our hosting costs, um, we have a Kofi and we have a Patreon, both of which will also be linked down below. Yee. Um until next time. Thank <gasps> you so much for listening and stay spooky. Stay spooky. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.